I want to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. Last year, I made this video called Digital Minimalism, in which I pointed out a few habits I was implementing to cut back the time I was spending using my phone and scrolling through social media. Although those habits were really useful for me, looking back, that video wasn't really useful for you because it failed to develop on the topic of digital minimalism in depth. So fast forward one year, I wanted to make amends, and I read a book all about digital minimalism, written by Cal Newport, the same author who wrote Deep Work and How to Become a Straight A Student. We've discussed both on his channel in case you want to check them out. In this video, I will be talking about the main principles and practices that Cal Newport teaches in his book, so you can reflect on them and figure out if you should be implementing them in your life as well. The idea behind digital minimalism is very simple. Just like you would declutter your personal belongings using general minimalism practices, digital minimalism suggests that you should be decluttering your digital tools and technology as well. The main reason for decluttering is simple. Technology and social media, much like other substances or behaviors, is addictive because it acts as intermittent positive reinforcement and drive for social approval. The kind of thing you find with the like button on Facebook, the heart on Instagram, the notifications, the comments. Technology companies recognize this and, of course, develop and tweak their apps and devices accordingly. There are, of course, some things you can do to make this better. And there are some quick fix tales, like disabling notifications, hiding your apps inside folders and such. Many of which I personally use during the year. But Cal Newport believes that it's very difficult to reform your digital life through the use of these types of tricks and tips, which means that a more drastic approach is needed if you really want to detach yourself from your phone and technology in general. One of the most important things you need to try to achieve is the philosophy of technology use. Basically, you need to know which digital tools you should allow into your life, for what reasons and under what constraints and circumstances. This philosophy is basically the core of digital minimalism. A philosophy of technology use in which you focus your online time on a small number of carefully selected and optimized activities that strongly support things you value and then happily miss out on everything else. Independently of your philosophy of technology use, there is a basic principle that you should interiorize as a digital minimalist. More can be less. New economics goes beyond a simple reasoning of consumerist culture and monetary outcomes. It focuses on the cost of life required to achieve an extra profit. According to Newport, this is something you should have in mind at all time. How much time and attention must be sacrificed to earn the small profit of occasional connections and new ideas that is earned by cultivating a significant presence on Twitter, for instance? Newport believes that gradually changing habits one at a time doesn't work well. As such, any attempt on optimizing technology can prove fruitless if the basic principles and your philosophy of technology of digital minimalism are not truly implemented. As such, the author suggests that you engage in a digital declutter process. This basically means you should put aside a 30-day period which you will take a break from optional technologies in your life. During this time, you should explore and rediscover activities and behaviors that you find satisfying and meaningful. At the end of the break, you should reintroduce optional technologies into your life, starting from a blank slate. For each technology you reintroduce, determine what value it serves in your life and how specifically you will use it so as to maximize this value. And during this time you should rediscover what's important to you. And this is one of the main problems behind technology usage and social media. They quickly allow you to forget what you actually enjoy doing before you allowed yourself to dive into it. As you finish the challenge and reintroduce technology, you should then ask yourself some fundamental questions. Does this technology directly support something that I deeply value? And is that technology the best way to support that value? 
You know, one of the things that's slowly disappearing, for instance, is the feeling and value of solitude. You know, when you're alone and feel alone because there isn't a device beeping with thousands of hours of content, games, music and podcasts in your pocket. We've lost the ability to feel bored and alone with our thoughts, problems and our recollections. There are two practices that can help you with this. Trying to leave your phone at home more often and engaging in long walks. Both are habits that can help you regain that feeling of solitude. Rediscovering your own thoughts and process thinking can help you become more aware of the environment around you, the people around you, without a constant distraction in your hand, pocket or handbag. Also, long gone is the time when people engage in high-quality leisure. You know, the practice and prioritization of joyful activities and not only the constant solving of problems and difficulties, broken here and there with half an hour spent scrolling through Facebook. Maximizing personal and financial efficiency shouldn't be the only relevant goal in life, so we should be allowing ourselves to regain sufficient time to develop new pursuits and hobbies. That half an hour spent scrolling through Facebook that I just mentioned is part addiction, part positive reinforcement, part void. The void of a lack of interest, activities or pursuits. And when the void is filled, you no longer need distractions to help you avoid it. The thing is, technology can be immensely helpful in filling the void. You can use websites like YouTube and Skillshare to watch lessons on everything. You can educate yourself on music, movies, and art. You can read through a Kindle, an iPad, or your phone. So there is value in technology. But as Carl Newport states, technology may be present, but should be subordinated to a simple support role. This also doesn't mean you should switch to a flip phone and never log into Instagram again. A way to practice more mindful technology usage is, for instance, scheduling in advance the time you spend on low-quality leisure. You can also delete social media from your phone and instead opt to use a less used device like a computer to check in with your friends. Not all of Cal Newport's recommended practices will fit everyone's lifestyles or preferences. For instance, I really don't agree with the whole start building or repairing things practice that may help you fill the void because, in my opinion, that's actually not very minimalistic and may very well distract you again from other more important things. Also, not everyone can start taking long walks every single day because a lot of people live in places that are simply not prone to walking outside alone, either because they don't have the space or because it's simply not safe. Either way, digital minimalism is a principle, a way of living and a manifesto. You call it. It just tries to open our eyes to a more mindful way to spend our time and regain control from our devices and social media. As I'm getting older, I feel like I'm slowly pushing away most social media and technology. I deleted literally all of my social media in 2020. I no longer use Facebook or Instagram. I never use Twitter because we simply don't use it a lot in Portugal. I deleted my LinkedIn account, which in my opinion is the most toxic social media platform out there. So I basically use YouTube now. It gives me a lot of joy in having a curated list of interesting videos and creators to watch and learn something new from. The thing is, there should be no guilt attached to whatever you're doing with your technology and your devices. But the important key lesson here is to avoid being their hostage. If it's no longer adding value or joy to your life, just go away, trade in that time for something better. I can't state in a short video all of the key lessons and practices suggested by Cal Newport in Digital Minimalism, so if you want to experience it yourself and read more about all the people Cal Newport spoke to and interviewed about this mindset, I highly recommend you to grab Digital Minimalism with your Audible Plus subscription, which has a lot of high-value content you can pick according to your own pursuits, like tons of audiobooks, podcasts, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, A-list comedy, and exclusive Audible originals. You can basically have your own curated list of content to enjoy, something that brings you value and insights, and you can access it in any of your devices. You can also download their titles and listen offline anywhere, so it's a great companion to bring along with you on a walk, 
if the whole long silent walk thing doesn't really please you. If you want to try out Audible Plus for free for 30 days, don't forget to go to audible.com slash Mariana or text Mariana to 500-500. A clickable link will be provided in the description box below. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!